What's up, nerds? I'm Aaron. I'm Tom. And today we're talking about Bunny Kingdom by Yellow Games. I'm really surprised I got that on the first try. <laughs> Bunny Kingdom is a game that mixes drafting with area control. I don't know why that this had nothing to do it's, with that. Either. It's some falling out of the sky, just taking control of taking this control. kingdom. You know how you take control of areas? You like jump out of a plane. And you're like, ah, that's my area. I'm a bunny. Bunny Kingdom was actually one of those games that I wasn't sure. Like, I mean. The cartooniness is like, oh, sweet, I'm going to like it. But I'm like, is it going to be a good game? I'm not really sure. And I was actually, uh, it was pointed out to me by Rachel. She saw it, like, months and months and months before it came out, before I even, like, realized that it was, like, in their catalog of upcoming games because she likes bunnies. And she was like, oh, I want to get into this hobby more. She's like, let's see if there's any games with bunnies. And Bunny Kingdom came up. And she's like, you should get this game. I'm like, yeah, we'll probably get that. And then after we played it, I'm like, we have to have this game. This thing's amazing. Um... Well, let's get a copy of it. It's actually kind of funny that you said that because, you know, when I look at games that are kind of cartoony, I'm like, I'm probably not going to like that. That looks silly, you know, and I think maybe me a little bit more, but you and I both have to kind of pull away from that as we're, as we're growing up and being like, ooh, I'm going to like it because of this superfluous reason, or I'm not going to like it because of this superfluous reason, yeah. you know? For sure, like, you can't just judge a game just by the cover because if I was just look at this cover, like, yes, I'm going to like it, Tom's going to be, no, I'm not going to like it, but... <laughs> The gameplay is actually really interesting. The fact that, you know, you're drafting these cards, which isn't a new mechanic, but it kind of seems fresh because you're drafting for areas and you're also drafting parchments that are you know, your, your end game missions and they're telling you how you're going to score your points. If, you know, you get your bunnies on the edge of the board or you have them all grouped together or if none of them are, are in adjacent thieves. There's so many different ways to score your points based on those parchments. It gives it just many different ways to play it you know it's like okay do i want to draft these specific ways of scoring or do i want to just build a giant thief and get a whole bunch of castles out here with all you know all these multipliers and really you know get your points that way instead there are two things that i kind of want to say about that one one with the parchments is it's what I was impressed with is the sheer volume of parchments oh, yeah, and how a lot of them contradict each other. Like you were just saying, you know, it's like, oh, have a really big thief or like have a bunch of little thieves. Like some of them, you're, you can't get, try and get both of them. Yeah. If you were you to know? draft both of them, they're very, yeah, very contradictory and you're like, mm -hmm. but then you might get the, there's the one that just gives you one point for every parchment you draft. So you might just, mm -hmm. if you draft that one early, you might just take one just because. Yeah, every card, I, uh, whether I get it or not, it's a point. So, you know. Um, and also the whole thief thing that, that Aaron was just talking about, the way that they score is a little bit funky. It's the number of spires on the towers in there times the number of different resource types. Yes, so it's not like, yeah. it's like, oh yeah, I have three wood in this one. It's like, no, 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 you only have one unique resource is wood. Mm -hmm. So like, it does make it a little hard to rake up points early game because there's only three basic resources you actually need to draft the the, the unique uh, resources out of here which you know like there's for the carrots you can make carrot dust or whatever like you just like grind yeah, up the yeah. carrots if you can draft those they they really increase your point multiplier for your thieves but then again the thief has to be pretty big in order for you to be able to multiply them because you can only ever have like one I always say there can only ever be one thing on a square like one not including a bunny like one token or one building or whatever like ooh can this uh, you know place that has a carrot printed on it have another resource on it like yes it can you can put that token on there but then you can't put a building on there yeah you know or even like the encampment token you know yeah, the, or the sky towers all those yeah they, they take up that slot, so to speak. So that's why, you know, with, like, those three woods side by side, it would still be advantageous to collect all of them because now you can put buildings on each of them. You can, you know, mm -hmm. use a sky tower to connect to your thief that's down there to make just this giant one, which you're multiplying everything all together. Mm -hmm. You can also, you know, trap these cities, like you're saying, to get these di the extra spires, extra towers. Um, there are only three of the three times one. So like if you see, if that one actually comes up in your hand and you're drafting, you're like, mm, I can get this three strength city, you should go for it because that's a lot of points. Like, can, like if you were to put just one of these other ones on a space or if you were to put just an extra resource on a space, you're only increasing your multiplier by one, but this is increasing it by three. The only you know downfall to these is they have to go on uh, the the stone the, the mountain, mountain area yeah the mountain areas so you know you have to make sure you draft a mountain 
to yeah, make it work. A, but there's, there's a, a different amount, amount of that. Yeah. And I mean, you're that's just kind of forcing your thief to be in a certain area. But if you're going to put a plus three multiplier on there, you're going to want it to be a big thief anyway. So the probability that that thief is large enough such that you hit a mountain, I, I'd say it's pretty high. It's a small price to pay for such a great card. There is something to be said about knowing what's in the deck. Okay. Knowing that there are only three of these, and it, it, I mean, it's obvious to see that there's only three, but knowing how many camp tokens there are, knowing how many sky towers and resources, knowing that you don't use every card in the deck, mm -hmm. that knowledge is kind of pivotal to your you know, success in the gameplay. The camps are really interesting, and it allows you to take over any territory that doesn't already have somebody there. Mm -hmm. And it becomes yours, and it helps you combine your thieves and start scoring points. They're very risky, though, because if later that card comes up, you know, if you took A1 and somebody drafts A1, they just, they're like, oh, sorry, get out of there. That's actually mine. Get out of there, you bum. That's, that's my spot. So it, you kind of just, like, put this investment there and hope that you can draft that one later to keep it or just hope that it never comes up in the, in the deck. Like, it, it, it's, it's really cool, uh, you know, a way to guarantee yourself a spot for at least this scoring round. Yeah, because you, you, build, you yeah, build at the end. You build at the end, so nobody can take that in between when you get the points for it and when the next time cards are drawn. And, and that the idea that it may not come up at all is a pretty big deal. Most of the time I, I save them for the very end, but there are some times when you're like, oh man, I could, you know, if I just put this, you know, this camp tile down here right now, that'll be mine. You know, I can score a bunch of points now and just hopefully nobody drafts it. Like it could just be one of the ones that never comes up or hopefully I, I get it if it does come up and I'll just draft it just to make sure I keep that spot. I actually think there's more benefit to the camp tiles early game because you, again, since that camp uh, tile is taking up that square, you can't put anything else on that square. So you either need to use it to link multiple thieves together or to get the resources already printed there. And if it's the last round and you have a big thief that doesn't already have one of the main printed resources, in, in, in my opinion, your street's behind. Because <laughs> I always you know, build one big thief that yeah, has... Yeah, and you're just like, oh, what do I need one more area for? Well, I mean, yeah. I, I'm always like, okay, I need to build something with at least a four multiplier. I need to get all three resources plus one special one there, at least. If I can get two, that's better. And then I'll just throw as many buildings on there as I can. And five times four at two or three rounds, that's that's a huge chunk of points. Mm -hmm. That is a huge chunk of points, especially if you can do it before everybody else. Because like you said, not a lot of people score points in the first round. There's very few points scored in the first round just because yeah. it's very hard to concentrate on one area when the mm -hmm. cards can tend to be very diversified in the areas that are coming up. Yeah, so I like get my, you know, figure out what area I want to try and focus on in round one, call that a wash, and then round two, just hit it home as much as I can. You know, and obviously playing the hand you're dealt or whatever, but what I'm telling you is that's a winning strategy. I've never lost this game. <laughs> that's that's for real. I really enjoy Bunny Kingdom. And I, I love getting this game to the table. It's very easy to introduce to people, like for a drafting area control style game. Like... There's not much that's easier than this. Like, this is very easy to teach. It is, it can take a little while to, you know, figure out the best strategy and know what cards are in here. Like, that, you're already gonna have the edge if you've already played it. But somebody sitting down just playing this for the first time is gonna be able to play it because it's, you know, it's a grid. You ever took math, you know, <laughs> you learned how to, you know, do grids and stuff. It's basic. But it's still fun. Like, I really enjoy this. Like, the last round especially, you're like, oh, man, we this, I really need these certain cards. And you, you're you getting these cards. You're like, oh, man, I want all of these, but I got to pass them. And every time I've played it, I've just had such a blast, you know, just trying to maximize my points. You know, with get, I usually go for just a whole bunch of the parchments, like, and try and, you know, pull off these different strategies and let that kind of build what I'm doing. And I... It's always fun. It's it's a great little game, and it's it's quick, and that's one thing that really gives it a leg up on mm -hmm. a lot of other games. The fact that you know it says forty five minutes on the box, but once you once you understand this game, you guys can you can play it in like thirty minutes, like mm -hmm. maybe even less. Like you're just like speed draft. Let's go. Let's go. You know, like you could definitely play this game multiple times in a night. Like mm -hmm. multiple times in the same time, you would be able to play one game of like Cyclades or you know, one of the bigger area control games. Yeah, so I, I like this game so much it actually made it into my top 10 list of 2018, so 
you might want to go check that out and see where it fell on that list. I'm going to agree with Aaron. I absolutely love this game. It didn't hit my top 10. It probably would hit like my top 20, 25. It is a little bit too cutesy for me. That's one of the negatives I have. Um, it's almost a little too quick. I really, like, I commend it for being really quick, and it's it's kind of impressive how quick it is, and yet still a lot of fun. But I tend to prefer the games that are a, li a bit more longer and drawn out, because, you know, I really want to settle in. When a game's really quick, I tend to care less about the score. I'm like, eh, if I lose this one, whatever, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll win the next one, around, even though I've still never lost this game. <laughs> the only other negative I have is I do think that the board is right now kind of small and hard especially when you have a lot of stuff that like your last round of scoring you're really like scanning this up and down like let me see where my stuff is and, and you, know. you said right now you right now like yeah that? so at the time of this recording this is the only board that's out there so there are you know rumors spreading around that they're going to come out with a much bigger board uh i don't know if it's going to be a play mat or whatnot um at the, again at the time of this recording maybe even by the time you're watching it's already out and maybe we already have a video for it so maybe you know, we'll put a link down there. If we no, 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 we're not going to show you. We're not even gonna, no pictures. But it's going to be never, never going to talk about it again. So if you're looking for a relatively good intro game, I almost would kind of put this maybe more of like a level two type of game because the uh, you know the rule I always use is if I could play this game with my mom, you know, and my mom's probably the most intro gamer that there is. Maybe not. Maybe if I could get her to you know make sure she really understands how to play Star Realms and then say, okay, now let's play this. Uh, you know, it's it's close. It's not a King of Tokyo type of, you know, intro game, but it's it's near there, I it's, would say. Yeah, it's it's pretty easy. Like Rachel really likes this game as well and she Is, is Rachel your mom? Rachel's my girlfriend. Uh. <laughs> and she uh she's still pretty new to this this and it plays really well as a two player game too. So if you're looking for something to play, you know, with your significant other, like this play is really good. It has a variant, but the variant's really good. You have kind of like two piles of cards. You have the ten you're drafting from, you, and you draw another one. So now you have this new information each round, and you have to burn one or keep one. So it plays very well for two players. And if you're looking, you know, or just if you have a group of newer players, I would recommend picking this up. So if this sounds good to you, you should click on the link in the description box below and get yourself a copy. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you'll never be bored. <laughs> <laughs>